Hey, 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 fellow REIT investors. The World Cup has started and essentially REITs have started their rebound. Where is the rebound now? Will the REITs continue to sustain their rebound? This is what we're going to delve into in today's video. And as usual, do subscribe, do subscribe and like our videos and be notified on our weekly videos. Hey, my fellow REIT investors, friends. These are the three charts that I'm going to show you that shows you the extent of REITs rebound so far. Now, the first chart that you can see, ladies and gentlemen, actually shows that some of the REITs, you know, the rebound is very poor. Some of them are really very good. What is the, actually the essential traits that lies true? Take, for example, the very first chart. You notice that the lowest rebound actually came from Fraser Hospitality. Oh my goodness, you know, maybe minority shareholders should have expect, expect uh, accepted the previous takeover offer. Well, then the strongest rebound in the first chart shows that it came from uh, essentially uh, Capital Pacific Oat. But within the office sector in the US, you notice that the its other competitors like Menolife and Prime didn't actually rebound as much. So what gives? What this actually takes. Okay, we will go through this analysis later. Um, the second chart shows essentially how this is the chart favored by many of my investor students at GCP Global because this were the kind of reads that we told you to hold to tick and tint, you know, um, and especially so. And let's see whether we've been right. Yes, you notice that this is a chart that shows that in terms of percentage rebound, you know, in terms, if you use a cutoff of 15%, where the prices of last Friday compared to the lows that was reached last month, Remember last month when I was interviewed in Zapao, or rather Business Times on the 20th of October, I say that we are reaching basically a period where prices are blurred on the streets kind of level, and that's actually time to buy. And guess what? The next day, the read market hit bottom, and then the subsequent week, in fact, now we are into the third week of rebound, right? So if you decipher through, you can see that some of the strongest rebounds come from capital more, it's up rather capital and more, now they call it capital land more, okay? Um, it's up 16.67%, Ascender Speed 11%, Maple 3 PAC, yes, that's a new merge of Maple 3, it's 12.9%, Maple 3 Logistics Trust, which in our last class, we have guided that once they actually stop their diet, the, uh, uh, their active acquisitions, I am sure the share price will rebound. And true enough, we were right again, you know, as this chart shows. And Capital DC Read, as you can see in previous videos, we have guided, especially after having our lunch with its CEO, Ms. Antia Lee. There's nothing wrong with the read. You know, it's just that basically there is a rapid sell-down because of skepticism pertaining to its high valuations in terms of price to book value. Then the next one is actually Ascenders India, which you and I know, ladies and gentlemen, that I will con have continued to be its major shareholder, as you can see from the chart, you know, for the years to come. And some of them like SPH Read. Now let's look at the third slide, right? And the third slide shows a mixed motley of under and over performance. You know, uh, the, uh, the, the one that overshot was actually Far East Hospitality Trust which are essentially uh, hospitality assets in Singapore, practically all in Singapore. You notice that they have been one of the strongest rebound. CDL Hotel Trust, also up 26%, for which we just had recent lunch with its CEO, Mr. Victor Yo. And in our classes, we have showed that and shared that there's again nothing wrong with CDL Hotel Trust when they actually were smashed up. And we reckon that it's actually part of the core holding that will enjoy So Gabriel, share with us some of the things that you learned from studying all those reads that are listed with respect to their rebound in quality. Can you also tell us essentially who do you think or which one do you think has the greatest amount of potential to rebound sharpers? And what are some of those lessons that we can learn on those that are not enjoying the rebound with the current market? Okay, if you look at the those that have rebound the, the best compared to those that hardly rebound. It's not, it is 
in sync with what we have been teaching all these 32 years, which is basically the fact that those reads that are strong, that are well managed, where the balance sheet are actually strong, where they've exhibited, you know, the affinity to take care of minority shareholders in their acquisitions exploits. For example, by not issuing shares at dirt cheap prices, you know, granted that they will issue up to 10% discount. These are the ones that have exhibited the strongest rebound. That's why you notice know, Ascenders Capital and more fit into that category. That's right, as shown in the first slide, right? Yeah, yep, this is the slide here. You notice that names like uh, Nanolife came up, names like Cromwell came up, the names like Primary came up. And look at the, uh, the last column, the dividend yield. Oh my goodness, Menolife Prime, their dividend yield is almost 14%, right? So one of the misnomer that we have been sharing in our investment classes and teaching as well as in our previous tutorials on YouTube is the fact that when REITs basically uh, are yielding too high dividend yield, it becomes what we call a dividend paradox. So do not believe and just jump on blindly onto REITs which are paying high dividend because the market is smart and the market is efficient as pointed out by the efficient market hypothesis. You know, so essentially if there is certain REITs that are having a high dividend, it could be a case where it has to be trading at such a high level to compensate for certain mis-efficiencies or certain not so good quality of the assets that the REITs actually present. So once again, this rebound has deciphered and actually separated the sheep from the goat. So for more of the sheep from the goat, do actually join us for our class this Saturday. You know, yes, just four more days to grab your seat for our class on 26th of November. This Saturday will be held at the Mandarin Orchard Singapore, where we decipher for you the sheep from the goat further into next year. Because bear in mind, the key to making money long term in real estate investment trust is picking and having the right wits in your portfolio. So Gabriel, tell us essentially what is the conscious process of making money from real estate investment trust or from investments? I think you actually have a live example to show. So uh, do tell us about Yes, this particular chart, ladies and gentlemen, is something that is inspiring for many of us as investors. You know, um, this is actually a gentleman called Ronald James Reed, you know, who actually died just uh, recently. In fact, just nine years ago, 2014. He's basically one of my uh, admired person on earth, you know, and he actually Everybody thought that only millionaires or multi-billionaires leave legacies to investors or rather to charities. This gentleman actually started as a janitor. He worked out, he worked out for 17 years as then uh, in Walmart, earning the minimum wage. And guess what? When he actually died in 2014 at the age of 92 years old, he actually left you know, an 8 million estate to his favorite charities. Now, if you go back to, again, what was said about him in the early stages when he was in school, that is a young picture of him. This person commented that it is tranquil people, that is peaceful people who accomplish much. So that's why you notice that it has become a philosophy in our GCP global classes, where we point out facts to you, examine the facts for you, obviously, so that you can actually make use of these facts that become good knowledge back from our experience. As you know, I have been the head of research, probably Singapore's youngest head of research in 1992, when I headed Nico Securities as a head of research. And then after that, I went to work in Wall Street. And then I came back and headed a few stockbroking houses in Singapore as its head of institutional sales before I retired in my early 40s. And that's why we felt that it is good to be able to give back through holding quarterly REITs classes so that you can grow your wealth in a very simplified way because our methodology is based on a conscious process of riding the risk. So that's why you notice 
and throughout this year, when rates have been coming down in our classes on YouTube video, we told you do not panic, do not sell your losers even if you have losers. In the first place, you shouldn't have losers in your portfolio if you attended our classes because we have shifted out the ship from the good for you. But nevertheless, if you, if you have you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, losers in the portfolio, bear in mind you know, that let compounding you know, take effect. Let compounding do its work for you. And compounding means having the ability to be patient and let the market work out for it. You have just published a latest publication on GCP Global website, and that is how to become a savvy sagacious rate investor. Can you tell us more about it? You know, and uh, point us out, you know, for those of you who have not visited uh, the GCP Global website to actually look into the archives as well. Yes, my fellow read friends, this is the article that you just published. This is the website that at GCP Global that you can come so that we can share with you our articles. Now you notice underlying all our monthly publications, which we have been doing for the last 33 years already, every month for the last 33 years. Yes, you notice ours is a steady, steadfast, gradual and continuous process. It's no different from letting money compound. Right, and that's the inspiration that we draw from one of other our other idols, that's Warren Buffett. I think a lot of people and a lot of books, something like 2,500 books have been written about how Warren Buffett hit it big. Okay, but actually very few books actually talks about how to stay rich, which is basically what he has done because it is after 75 years of becoming and investing consciously, continuously in the same process that he has instilled, similar to what we have been doing, then only in his 60s did he become a billionaire. So you may know or may not know that 96% of his wealth currently comes from wealth that he accumulated after 65 years old. So one of the key things that we learned really is the fact that not just how to become rich, which is what 2,500 books have been written about, but very few books have written about how to continue to stay rich and that's what at gcp global in our investment classes we try to instill that through you through real estate investment trust because real estate investment trust as in my book making your millions in reads this is the english publication and this is a chinese publication that is a hot seller in both china and the us you know actually shares with you Right, so it is actually another extension of the compounding effect that is basically choose the right rates in the portfolio, let it continue to multiply your wealth. Because remember, rates pay you three components income, foreign exchange, and capital gain. You don't necessarily have to have capital gain all the time. Of course, if you can, that would be great. But the ability to reinvest the dividend that's paid in you, you know, paid to you rather every quarterly or every half quarterly actually holds the key for compounding and holds the key for you to actually enter the same stocks or other REITs at a cheap level to then multiply your wealth. This is our key concern. So our key concern at GCP Global for you, the investor, is to how to stay rich forever. So hopefully you enjoyed this week's video. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, be notified. And hopefully, many of you can join us for our classes. Do actually come on, let us invite you to join for our classes. We are still holding the last few seats for you to subscribe to actually sign up at our GCP Global website. So, once again, see you this Saturday.